What's up, everybody? Justin here, bringing you another poorly reviewed beer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a special one. From Russian River Brewing Company in Santa Rosa, California, this is Pliny the Elder. Double IPA. Uh, so as promised in my last video, a little bit of a story behind uh, getting this beer. If you don't know, uh, Russian River's distribution is quite limited, and uh, Pliny, I would probably say especially so. Um, but my parents are lucky enough to have some friends um, live, live out in California wine country and near Santa Santa Rosa. So I asked if uh, my dad would pick up a couple of bottles for me when they went out there uh, fairly recently. Um, and he did that and he was kind enough to uh, carry him home in his luggage on a flight from uh, cross country from California. And then uh, sent them out UPS two day, uh, second day delivery. And this, uh, I live in an, apart an apartment complex, but I see UPS delivering here all the time. If not to specific apartments, uh, they'll drop stuff off at the, uh, the office up, fr up front. Uh, and then you can come and clean your packages at your convenience. So I see UPS here all the time, but I got a, a note saying, uh, from, uh, like the delivery information on the website that they couldn't, the information was wrong for delivery. Um, and unfortunately, that was a Friday. I guess uh, my dad shipped it on a Wednesday, second day air. It was supposed to come Friday, and they could not deliver it. And so it sat in a warehouse until Monday. Now, my dad had taken some precautions to try to get it um, here. I guess he had picked it up cold and so uh, from the brewery, and so he needed to uh, try to keep it cold, um, both on the flight back, which he did, and then on when it was delivered. So he... He packed it with a, a, a cold, a cold pack as best he could, and then we just kind of had to hope for the best. That was a uh, complicated, a great deal, by the fact that it sat in a UPS warehouse over the weekend. So unfortunately, I did not get this beer until, I guess it was this past Monday when it was supposed to be there the the Friday before. Um, the beer was unfortunately just past room temperature, as you expect sitting in a hot warehouse, sitting in a hot truck um, all weekend and all day, respectively. Um, and so, but I did try this. I think it's uh, held up well. Uh, so I think we lucked out on this one. It turns out that they didn't deliver that Friday uh, because the person who took down the shipping information put the wrong apartment number. So my dad was able actually to get all his... Uh, the shipping, the shipping cost back, which was considerable. Again, it was second day air. Um, so he at least had that going for him. UPS did their best to rectify the situation. But I got lucky. I took a little bit of a preview test of this beer. Um, it seems to have held up pretty well. Though I've never... I don't have a frame of reference, of course, for this uh, specific beer. But um, it does seem to have uh, held up well. Um, for those of you that don't know, Pliny the Elder is... Um, certainly on a, a bucket list caliber of beer, so um, I'm very excited to have this, and it's possibly only overshadowed by, I guess you would call it its uh, nephew, based on what, yeah, based on the uh, the actual history of the name, um, its nephew, Pliny the Younger, which uh, is a very rare release from Russian River and is a triple IPA. The Pliny the Elder is a double, and the uh, Pliny the Younger is a triple IPA. Um, at least just once a year, I believe, on a Friday in February. And it's one of those things people line up, you know, down the block hours before the, the brewery opens the release day to um, to pick up this beer, to pick up that beer, rather. Not not this beer. This uh, Planet Yelder is, at least in the brewery uh, at Russian River, fairly, uh, fairly available. So, um, again, lucked out. Got a couple of bottles, and we are going to check it out now. Actually, before I pour, I do have, a, after all that story, I do have a, the notes and the story from the brewery, brewery itself. So they say, Pliny the Elder is brewed with Amarillo Centennial, CTZ, and Simcoe hops. It is well-balanced with malt, hops, and alcohol, slightly bitter, with a fresh hop aroma of floral, citrus, and pine. It is best enjoyed fresh. And, uh, by the way, this bottle is dated 41217, so we're just over a month. That's why we make it in such limited supply. Actual bottling, a bottling date is printed on each bottle. Again, as I said, it's right, right there. You can see it. 4, 12, 17. 
Where did we come up with this name? Back in the year 2000, our friend Vic Crowley, who owns the Bistro in Hayward, California, decided to have his first ever, ever double IPA festival. Vic inv invited 10 breweries, six of whom, including us, had to brew something special for him since we had nothing that would fall under this style category. Vinny had made a double IPA at Blind Pig in 1994, but was not brewing one at Russian River Brewing at the time. He had an idea for the recipe, but not a name. After much, research, after much research in beer books, brainstorming, and deliberation, we came up with Pliny the Elder. Pliny the Man lived in the first century, 23 to 70, 79 AD. According to our brewer, brewing references, he and his contemporaries either created the bo botanical name or at least wrote about lupus salicarius or hops, currently known as humulus lupulus. That was a very early reference to an important part of any double IPA. Pliny the Beer has now become one of our flagship brews. Pliny the Elder was immortalized by his nephew, Pliny the Younger, who wrote about his uncle succumbing to ash and smoke during the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD while rescuing people. Cheers to the his scholar, historian, officer, writer, and Roman naturalist, Pliny the Elder. All right, enough talking. Let's check this beer out. Comes in a... Uh, Rather strange, I believe, yes, 510 milliliter bottle makes for one point or one pint, 1.25 fluid ounces. And, uh, yeah, so checking it out, uh, I would say a pale goldish color. Let me turn on some lights. A decent amount of head finger, uh, finger and a half to maybe two fingers. Uh, pretty much pretty well see through. And maybe just some uh, some pale yellow highlights as I hold up to the light, but nice uh, pale gold color overall. I see a fair amount of carbonation coming through the glass, and it seems to be uh, the head seems to be holding up pretty well. All right, let's give it a try. Hmm. A uh, fair amount of sweetness, and that's kind of the first uh, the first thing I really register from this beer. Uh, not surprising, given it's a uh, it is eight percent ABV. I don't believe I mentioned that before, but uh, a double IPA. They, I find they tend to get a bit, get a bit of uh, of boozy sweetness to them. But I'm um, going going deeper. I get plenty of pine. Uh, maybe something, I'm getting some, something herbal or maybe almost like a, a tobacco or maybe like a, a, a leather of some sort, something along those lines. Um, I think more, more herb, less, less herbal and more, well, tobacco, I guess is technically an herb, but, um, you know, I, I, I think of traditionally, I think of herbs, I think more of, you know, things you would cook with, uh, and, and compared to tobacco which i would put in kind of its own separate category so yeah like a tobacco or a worn leather something like that maybe just a hint of citrus in there too but i think the pine and really those kind of earthy earthy herbal tobacco notes are really uh, the biggest things going on Uh, fairly well balanced, I find. There's, there is a little bit of a, a malt characteristic in there. I find that's, I'm pretty surprising to find in a double IPA overall. So I think that's really a uh, a testament to the crafting of this beer. The bitterness is plenty present, but it's not not overwhelming. And it is quite strong, the, the, the bitterness, but it, it doesn't overwhelm the palate it doesn't wreck the palate it's it's close but uh it's not quite there so they again that's kind of a nice a nice delicate touch i think that they put to this beer that it doesn't uh it's right on the the, the cusp of wrecking your palate but it doesn't quite get there but um needless to say really really delicious um I consider myself very lucky to have been able to uh, acquire some of this beer, and I'm very thankful to my 
my parents to for uh, for schlepping it across the country. I'm I'm in South Carolina. They're they're a little further north on the East Coast, but they had to bring it all the way from um, from California. Uh, again, because the distribution is so limited, I think some people like in the city of Philadelphia. I don't know if they're the like the Russian River guys' best friends or something, but they there's some people in Philadelphia who do get these Russian River beers, but um, otherwise the distribution is limited to just parts of California, not even all of California, I would dare say. But mm. that's really really terrific. Um, <laughs> Scratch one off the bucket list. Uh, there, I've been able to knock out a few of them. Uh, what, what you consider some bucket list beers? I would say the the Goose Island Bourbon County Stout uh, before they got acquired. And I'm not going to get into politics in this. I've talked about uh, ABI and all that kind of stuff enough in the last couple of weeks. But um, pre acquisition, I do believe I had some of the the, the bourbon, bourbon Bourbon County Stout. You know what I mean. Uh, so I've had that, and um, another one that's maybe not necessarily on everybody's, uh, excuse me, on everybody's list, but um, I would say the the, cho- the Mexican chocolate cake from Westbrook uh, down in Charleston, I think, is a similar cal- caliber beer uh, to those. To to this, although that's a, that's a style, it's so obviously a different style. But in terms of the quality and in terms of uh, it being a bit of a rare commodity, um yeah, so that, I would say probably like three to four of these beers, bucket list caliber beers I've been able to to knock out. So um, I'm kind of rambling now, so I'm going to stop. But um, this really is a terrific, terrific beer. I'm very thankful to have been able to, to get some of it here. And I still have a little bit of this bottle, about a third of this bottle left. I have a whole other bottle, and I'm not complaining about that. Uh, really, really terrific stuff. Um, So that's it for this edition of Poorly Reviewed Beer. You can find all my reviews with video and written, along with news, commentary, and more at poorlyreviewedbeer.com. Also check out PRB on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Untapped. You'll find those links and usernames in the description below. If you're so inclined, also, uh, feel free to like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around at Poorly Reviewed Beer.